Hi, I'm here to talk about Chapter 7, Section 1, Power Functions. And before I actually jump into the notes, I want to make two comments. Um, one, first of all, when the when you do the homework from this section, it says sketch the graphs. You can just sketch it. You don't need to make a really nice, pretty graph. Just get the general shape. The second thing, I want to make sure we're kind of all on the same page as far as exponents, what exponents are. should be kind of no-brainer stuff, um, but I want to make sure we all saying the same thing. So if you have something like x squared, really that's just saying x times x. And if you have like an x to the fifth, so this here in blue, feel free to not write it. But uh, So x squared is just x times x. If you have x to the fifth, that's x times itself five times. So x times x times x times x times x. So the exponents just tell us how many times that base, whatever is to that power, is multiplied by itself. All right, this section here really has two things in it. The first one's going to be probability. And it doesn't have like a really nice probability equation written out, so I just have kind of hacked at it this way. That if you want to figure out the total probability of something happening, so for my equation I'm just going to write total probability. Really the total chances of something happening. Um, and then I'm going to write in parentheses it's the chances for each And then the exponent is the number of questions or roles, maybe I'll say slash or events. Um, an example or two would probably help with that. My brother brags about when he was in college that he was he didn't read the book and then he took a true false quiz and he was the only one that got a perfect score and the prof yelled at the whole class and like if everybody had read it like Michael Falk anywho um, if you're looking at the chances of that let's say you have a seven question true false quiz what are your chances of getting all seven questions right if you just totally randomly guess well your chances for each if you have a true false that's going to be a one half you have a 50 percent chance or one out of two chance of getting it right and then in this case it's the number of questions would be seven because you have a one-half, so it would be one-half for the first question times one-half for the second times one-half for the third, and so on. Which, in a couple sections, we're going to get into the properties of this, but this is the same, then the seven applies to both parts of the fraction. So we have a one to the seventh over two to the seventh. So the numerator, then, is going to be one times itself seven times, which just gives us the one. The two to the seventh is 128. So if you just totally randomly guess, you have a 1 in 128 chance of getting it all right. One more example. Let me write an example 2. This one I'll actually write it out. Um, so the probability of rolling uh, five ones. So say you have a die, you know, one dice, and you're going to roll the thing five times. What's your chances of rolling a one five times in a row? So for that, it's going to be similar to the one we have up here. Uh, you, what's your chances of rolling a one? Well, that'd be one-sixth. If we did, what's your chance of an even? Then it'd be three out of six, or one-half. Um, one-sixth to the fifth power. And again, that'll be one to the fifth over 6 to the 5th, which gives us a 1 out of 7,776. Um, if you wanted to, you could take these, and instead of saying 1 out of this or this out of this chances, you could take and punch that into your calculator and get a decimal. And if I did that, I'd get 0 .0001286 which then if you wanted to change that to a percent, you always move the decimal point two places when going from a decimal to a percent. So your decimal point would move to over here. So you could say what's your chance of rolling five ones? You have a point zero one three, I'll do some rounding, percent chance. So less than one percent chance of rolling five ones at one time. The last part of this section it talks about odd versus even power functions. And I want to just kind of put those two side by side, say a few things about them, then we're done. Uh, so the first thing I want to say is, well, what really is an even power function? So that's going to be something like a y equals x squared, 
or a y equals x to the fourth, y equals x to the fourteenth, um, just has to be y equals x to some even exponent. And so some even natural number. Um, with the odd powers then, that'd be something like y equals x to the first, y equals x to the third, y equals x to the ninth, but y equals x to the third maybe, or y equals x to some odd power. Or maybe I'll throw even number and odd number in there. Um, if you take your graphing calculator and punch those in, like a y equals x to the squared, or y equals x to the second, a y equals x to the twelfth, you're going to get a shape that looks something like this. And it's going to have that same general sort of shape. It'd be symmetrical. Mine's a little off. Um, doesn't really matter what the exponent is. If it's an even, it's going to look like that. It'll just change kind of the shape right, right over here. It'll either be a little flatter or sharper. And how far it goes over before it gets up to almost vertical. Odd powers are going to look similar on one side, but then the other side's going to be turned down. So odd powers will have that sort of general shape. Um, one thing I want to then go into is what's the domain for each of those. So let's maybe do this in a couple colors. So the domain and the domain over here. And just to refresh your memory, domain is going to be the set of all possible values uh, for the independent variable, which would be the x in this. So if you look at this graph here, you say, well, what could the x values be, either from the graph or in the equation? It's like, what number could you take to an even power? So for both of those, it's going to be all real numbers. So all real numbers. That you could have the graph get over here somewhere to a million. It's just going to be really, really, really high up by the time it gets there. Same thing here. You could take a positive to a, the third. You could take a negative number to the third power. You could take zero to the third power. Um, and the graph, eventually, you're going to get way over here to the right, way over there to the left. So the domain then also is going to be all real numbers. The next thing is the range. What's the set of all possible values for the independent, or the dependent variable, which in this case is y. And this is where it gets a little bit different for the two. If you look at the graph here on the left, it's going to be, well, what values for y do you have? And if it's drawn correctly, I should be right down there at the origin as well. So the range, you could write it several different ways. You could say y such that uh, 0 is less than or equal to y. Or you could say y is greater than or equal to 0. You could also, if you wanted to, say all positive real numbers and 0. Our book kind of re usually sticks with all non-negative real numbers. Um, so any of those would work. Positive real numbers and 0, non-negative real numbers. Uh, for the range here, it includes all those. It's here at zero and includes all the positives, but it also has all the negatives. So range for odd powers is again going to be all real numbers. And the last thing I want to say about these is what quadrants are they in? And if you remember back uh, to earlier math classes, I presume, uh, your quadrants are labeled this way, one, two, three, four. I always kind of wondered why it was that way. Um, why don't we go like left to right, like when we read, or at least clockwise feels more normal. Uh, we'll get into chapter 10, kind of why that is. But So for the quadrants, for both of these, for your even power functions, it's up above the y-axis. So we have quadrants 1 and 2. And for the odd power function, we have quadrants 1 and 3. That's all there is in section 1.